Hello everyone, welcome back to Haunted Yorkshire. We're still in Leeds because now this is more of a personal occurrence, a personal encounter from a particular family. So it's from a home in Leeds, but still Leeds nonetheless. Mrs Maureen Howley Aylward had some odd experiences in her former home in Dawlish Avenue, Leeds 9, where she went in the 1970s as a bride with her husband. I always felt that there was someone in the wings, as it were, she remembers. I would be working at the sink in the kitchen and feel that someone was standing in the doorway to the stairs, which led off from the kitchen. I never, ever felt afraid in that house. On the contrary, I felt that whoever was living there with us was a good person. I would be in a room and feel that someone had come into the house, but then think maybe I heard someone next door. I would see shadows now and again, but thought that perhaps I'd just imagined it. I had to go out to work, but always had to do things which fitted in with the, the domestic scene of a home and how you take care of it of course. I took a job that meant working during the night. It was in a club and sometimes I did not get in from work until four o'clock in the morning. One of my sisters would stay to take care of our son and she would sleep in the attic with him. One night at around 4am a taxi dropped me off home. There were Lego toys scattered in the front room so I obviously picked them up and put them in the plastic box used for that purpose. Still carrying the box, I walked through the kitchen and headed for the stairway leading up to the bedrooms. There were no lights on the stairs, though the dawn was beginning to filter through a window and out onto the landing. When I looked upwards, I saw a figure standing on the landing and presumed it was my husband. I said, what are you doing, John? And continued up the stairs. But when I reached the top, the figure had gone. Standing there for a moment, I suddenly felt someone pushing up against me and I was then being pushed up against the wall. Whatever or whoever it was did not touch me because the pressure was coming from the plastic toy box that I held out in front of me as though someone was pushing that into my stomach and hence pushing me into the wall. My husband must have woken and I heard his voice coming from the bedroom. He was in bed. I completely lost it. I screamed, threw down the toy box and ran downstairs tripping over the Lego toys, which came clattering down after me. Trying to reconstruct what had happened, I realised that when I had looked up the stairs and thought my husband had got out of bed, I did not see his clothes. What I saw was a simply, well... It was a figure, that's all, it was a figure and I just presumed it was him. When I was pressed against the wall, it wasn't what you would call a violent movement. It was just a steady pressure. I don't know how long it lasted, but my immediate terror and flight were instinctive and I always regret having acted that way. I have no explanation for any of this, but I'm absolutely positive of one thing. From that moment on, I never felt a presence in the house again, and I knew that whoever it was had gone. For a long time afterwards, I would sit on their stairs and sit on the stairs and say, "I'm sorry that I was afraid of you. Please come back." But it had gone. I never felt a shadow pass me in the house again either. The end of that one. Very interesting that. A uh, resident ghost should decide to disappear because of a reaction. Very odd. So then we move into um, Oatley or Otley. Some people pronounce it Oatley and some people pronounce it Otley. I say it was Otley because it's O T L E Y, but I have heard a few call it Oatley. But in my book, if it were Oatley, it would be O A T, but that's just my presumption. So Otley. Staff at the British Heart Foundation charity shop 
at Otley are found, but there is a mischievous spirit at work on the premises. In April 1999, the manager, Mrs Angela Harrison, told a local newspaper that at the start of business, on four different occasions, pictures had been found with their glass fronts smashed. Although, there was never any sign of a break-in, nothing had been reported missing. One of the dummies in the shop window also had a habit of turning round during the night. Not all the way round, but just a little to the right. And yet, when the staff leave the premises in the evening, every dummy is facing forward. There are also odd smells such as pipe tobacco noticeable in certain parts of the shop. Often sounds on the shop floor when there is no one in the vicinity to account for them. Not so long ago, workmen who were making some changes to the cellar, said they were unhappy about being down there, protesting that there is something not quite right about the cellar. They didn't see anything, but they had a strong feeling that they were not alone, that unseen eyes were watching them. Miss Linda Harrison, who also works at the shop, said that it would be great if their non-paying tenant could do something really useful by helping to move the stock on the shop floor overnight, in time for the following day's trade. (laughs) And that's the end of that one. But I guess sometimes spirits are not useful. They do things we don't want them to do. The next place we head over to is Rishworth. Greenfield Lodge is a large Georgian house, which has also been called the Red House and Parkfield Hall in its time. Odd things happen on both the inside and outside of the property, which has 15 bedrooms, a courtyard with a barn and stables, strange sounds such as a woman's muffled voice, a car pulling up outside when there are no vehicles in the vicinity, the smell of fish and chips coming from the corner of the living room, the living room, then mystery bumps and crashes, coming from an unoccupied rooms upstairs, but there's no one in, as if someone's moving about, or the irregular experience this, and it, it sounds like someone's moving about, but there's never nobody up there. These days, cows are kept, and the lodge has its own milk supply, but previously, a lady used to come and deliver it every morning. One day, she drove up to the house, she felt distinctively uneasy, She had a weird sensation that there was someone sitting alongside her in the Land Rover. When she stopped, she watched with horror as her passenger door opened and closed again as if someone had climbed out of the vehicle. One night, the owners of the lodge were woken by the screech of brakes on the road outside. When they peered out, they saw a lady sitting in a car and a man, the driver, checking the fastenings on the gate. The owners heard the woman shriek, Come on, let's get out of here. She then pointed towards the lodge and said to the man, It came from in there. The man quickly climbed back in the car. The two sped off, never to be seen again. The owners often wondered exactly what the couple had experienced and, particularly, what the it was to which they had been referring On the night that the owners had moved in, they had brought a trail load of furniture, which they'd left unloaded in the forecourt. The man was awoken in the early hours of the next morning by the sound of children shouting and singing. Peering through the curtains, he saw a group of youngsters running around playing in the forecourt, completely ignoring the trailer of furniture. He watched them as they moved away towards the nearby Brown Cow Inn, then again to the gate of the neighbouring farm, then returned to the forecourt, and slowly all faded away. Whenever any structural alterations are undertaken at the lodge, a ghost in a high-necked blouse with a row of buttons down the front and a long grey skirt, thought to be a previous owner, Elizabeth Emmett, appears and she's always seen to be weeping uncontrollably. It's not known whether this sad ghost is also responsible for the other happenings at the lodge. It is Elizabeth Emmett who makes the kitchen door open and close of its own accord, 
with a distinct sensation of someone walking through the living room. And it is she, I think, that's a woman, who is being seen going upstairs, and has been mistaken for a real person, more than once. Hmm. And that is the end of that tale. When we return, we're going to head over to Wakefield. Thank you for listening and many blessings.